Philip Melanchthon, born Philip Schwarzschild, was a German reformer, collaborator with Martin Luther, the first systematic theologian of the Protestant Reformation, intellectual leader of the Lutheran Reformation, and an influential designer of educational systems. He stands next to Luther and Calvin as a reformer, theologian, and molder of Protestantism. Along with Luther, he is the primary founder of Lutheranism. They both denounced what they believed was the exaggerated cult of the saints, asserted justification by faith, and denounced the coercion of the conscience in the sacrament of penance by the Catholic Church that they believed could not offer certainty of salvation. In unison they rejected transubstantiation, the belief that the bread from the Lord's Supper becomes Christ's body when consecrated. Melanchthon made the distinction between law and gospel the central formula for Lutheran evangelical insight. By the law, he meant God's requirements both in Old and New Testament. The gospel meant the free gift of grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Early life and education. He was born Philip Schwartzit on the 16th of February 1497 at Breton near Karlsruhe, where his father Georg Schwartzit was armorer to Philip, Count Palatine of the Rhine. His birthplace, along with almost the whole city of Breton, was burned in 1689 by French troops during the War of the Palatinate Succession. The town's Melanchthon House was built on its site in 1897. In 1507 he was sent to the Latin school at Fort Time, where the rector, Georg Simler of Wimpfen, introduced him to the Latin and Greek poets and Aristotle. He was influenced by his great-uncle Johann Riechlin, brother of his maternal grandmother, a representative humanist. It was Riechlin who suggested the change from Schwarzschild into the Greek equivalent Melanchthon, a custom which was usual among humanists of that time. Still young, he entered in 1509 the University of Heidelberg where he studied philosophy, rhetoric, and astronomy, astrology and was known as a good Greek scholar, on being refused the degree of master in 1512 on account of his youth, he went to Tübingen, where he continued humanistic studies, but also worked on jurisprudence, mathematics, and medicine. While there, he was taught the technical aspects of astrology by Johannes Stoffler. Having taken the degree of master in 1516, he began to study theology. Under the influence of men like Riechlin and Erasmus he became convinced that true Christianity was something different from scholastic theology as it was taught at the university. He became a conventor in the Contubernium and instructed younger scholars. He also lectured on oratory, on Virgil and Livy. His first publications were an edition of Terence in his Greek grammar, but he had written previously the preface to the Epistoli Clarorum Virorum of Riechlin, professor at Wittenberg. Opposed as a reformer at Tübingen, he accepted a call to the University of Wittenberg by Martin Luther, recommended by his great-uncle Johann Riechlin. Melanchthon became professor of the Greek language in Wittenberg at the age of 21. He studied the scripture, especially of Paul, and evangelical doctrine. He was present at the disputation of Leipzig as a spectator, but participated by his comments. Johann Eck having attacked his views, Melanchthon replied based on the authority of scripture in his Defensio contra Joannem Eckium. After lectures on the Gospel of Matthew and the Epistle to the Romans, together with his investigations into the doctrines of Paul, he was granted the degree of Bachelor of Theology, and was transferred to the theological faculty. He married Katharina Krapp, daughter of Wittenberg's mayor, on 25 November 1520. Theological Disputes in the beginning of 1521 in his Didym of Faventini versus Tom Implacentinim pro M. Luthero Oratia, he defended Luther. He argued that Luther rejected only papal and ecclesiastical practices which were at variance with scripture. But while Luther was absent at Wartburg Castle, during the disturbances caused by the Zwickau prophets, Melanchthon wavered. 
the appearance of Melanchthon's loci communes re rum theologicarum seu hypertyposis theologici was of subsequent importance for Reformation. Melanchthon presented the new doctrine of Christianity under the form of a discussion of the leading thoughts of the Epistle to the Romans. Loci communes began the gradual rise of the Lutheran scholastic tradition, and the later theologians Martin Chemnitz, Matthias Hafenreffer, and Leonhard Hutter expanded upon it. Melanchthon continued to lecture on the classics. On a journey in 1524 to his native town, he encountered the papal legate, Cardinal Lorenzo Campeggio, who tried to draw him from Luther's cause. In his Unterricht der Visitaten und die Fahrherren im Kurfürstentum zu Saxan Melanchthon presented the evangelical doctrine of salvation as well as regulations for churches and schools. In 1529 he accompanied the elector to the Diet of Spire. His hopes of inducing the imperial party to a recognition of the Reformation were not fulfilled. Augsburg Confession the composition now known as the Augsburg Confession was laid before the Diet of Augsburg in 1530, and would come to be considered perhaps the most significant document of the Protestant Reformation. While the Confession was based on Luther's Marburg and Schwabach articles, it was mainly the work of Melanchthon. Although commonly thought of as a unified statement of doctrine by the two reformers, Luther did not conceal his dissatisfaction with the ironic tone of the confession. Indeed, some would criticize Melanchthon's conduct at the Diet as unbecoming of the principle he promoted, implying that faith in the truth of his cause would logically have inspired Melanchthon to a more firm and dignified posture. Others point out that he had not sought the part of a political leader, suggesting that he seemed to lack the requisite energy and decision for such a role and may simply have been a lackluster judge of human nature. Melanchthon then settled into the comparative quiet of his academic and literary labors. His most important theological work of this period was the commentary I an Epistolam Pauli ad Romanos, noteworthy for introducing the idea that to be justified means to be accounted just whereas the apology had placed side by side the meanings of to be made just and to be accounted just. Melanchthon's increasing fame gave occasion for several honorable calls to Tübingen, to France, and to England, but consideration of the elector caused him to refuse them. Discussions on Lord's Supper and Justification he took an important part in the discussions concerning the Lord's Supper which began in 1531. He approved fully of the Wittenberg Concord sent by Busser to Wittenberg, and at the instigation of the Landgrave of Hesse discussed the question with Busser in Kassel at the end of 1534. He eagerly labored for an agreement. For his patristic studies and the dialogue of Oecolampadius had made him doubt the correctness of Luther's doctrine. Moreover, after the death of Zwingli and the change of the political situation his earlier scruples in regard to a union lost their weight. Bucer did not go so far as to believe with Luther that the true body of Christ in the Lord's Supper is bitten by the teeth but admitted the offering of the body and blood in the symbols of bread and wine. Melanchthon's relation to Luther was not disturbed by his work as a mediator, although Luther for a time suspected that Melanchthon was almost of the opinion of Zwingli, nevertheless he desired to share his heart with him. During his sojourn in Tübingen in 1536 Melanchthon was severely attacked by Cordatus preacher in Nemec, because he had taught that works are necessary for salvation. In the second edition of his loci he abandoned his earlier strict doctrine of determinism which went even beyond that of Augustine, and in its place taught more clearly his so-called synergism. He repulsed the attack of Cordatus in a letter to Luther and his other colleagues by stating that he had never departed from their common teachings on this subject. And in the antinomian controversy of 1537, Melanchthon was in harmony with Luther. Controversies with Flacius, 
The last eventful and sorrowful period of his life began with controversies over the interims in the Adiaphora. It is true, Melanchthon rejected the Augsburg interim, which the emperor tried to force upon the defeated Protestants, but in the negotiations concerning the so-called Leipzig interim he made concessions, which many feel can in no way be justified. Even if one considers his difficult position, opposed as he was to the elector and the emperor, in agreeing to various Roman usages, Melanchthon started from the opinion that there are diaphora if nothing is changed in the pure doctrine and the sacraments which Jesus instituted, but he disregarded the position that concessions made under such circumstances have to be regarded as a denial of evangelical convictions. Melanchthon himself perceived his faults in the course of time and repented of them, perhaps having to suffer more than was just in the displeasure of his friends and the hatred of his enemies. From now on until his death he was full of trouble and suffering. After Luther's death he became the theological leader of the German Reformation, not indisputably. However, for the Lutherans with Matthias Flacius at their head accused him and his followers of heresy and apostasy. Melanchthon bore all accusations and calumnies with admirable patience, dignity, and self-control. Disputes with Oshander and Flacius In his controversy on justification with Andreas Oshander Melanchthon satisfied all parties. Melanchthon took part also in a controversy with Stan Carey, who held that Christ was our justification only according to his human nature. He was also still a strong opponent of the Roman Catholics, for it was by his advice that the Elector of Saxony declared himself ready to send deputies to a council to be convened at Trent, but only under the condition that the Protestants should have a share in the discussions and that the Pope should not be considered as the presiding officer and judge, as it was agreed upon to send a confession to Trent. Melanchthon drew up the Confessio Sax Onica, which is a repetition of the Augsburg Confession, discussing, however, in greater detail, but with moderation, the points of controversy with Rome. Melanchthon on his way to Trent at Dresden saw the military preparations of Maurice of Saxony, and after proceeding as far as Nuremberg, returned to Wittenberg in March 1552, for Maurice had turned against the emperor. Owing to his act, the condition of the Protestants became more favorable and were still more so at the Peace of Augsburg. But Melanchthon's labors and sufferings increased from that time. The last years of his life were embittered by the disputes over the interim and the freshly started controversy on the Lord's Supper, as the statement, good works are necessary for salvation, appeared in the Leipzig interim. Its Lutheran opponents attacked in 1551 Georg Major, the friend and disciple of Melanchthon. So Melanchthon dropped the formula altogether, seeing how easily it could be misunderstood. But all his caution and reservation did not hinder his opponents from continually working against him, accusing him of synergism and Zwinglianism. At the Colloquy of Worms in 1557 which he attended only reluctantly, the adherents of Flacius and the Saxon theologians tried to avenge themselves by thoroughly humiliating Melanchthon in agreement with the malicious desire of the Roman Catholics to condemn all heretics, especially those who had departed from the Augsburg Confession, before the beginning of the conference. As this was directed against Melanchthon himself, he protested, so that his opponents left, greatly to the satisfaction of the Roman Catholics who now broke off the colloquy, throwing all blame upon the Protestants. The Reformation in the 16th century did not experience a greater insult, as Nietzsche says. Nevertheless, Melanchthon persevered in his efforts for the peace of the Church, suggesting a synod of the Evangelical Party and drawing up for the same purpose the Frankfurt Recess, which he defended later against the attacks of his enemies. More than anything else the controversies on the Lord's Supper embittered the last years of his life. The renewal of this dispute was due to the victory in the Reformed Church of the Calvinistic doctrine and its influence upon Germany. To its tenets Melanchthon never gave his assent, nor did he use its characteristic formulas. 
The personal presence and self-impartation of Christ in the Lord's Supper were especially important for Melanchthon, but he did not definitely state how body and blood are related to this. Although rejecting the physical act of mastication, he nevertheless assumed the real presence of the body of Christ and therefore also a real self-impartation. Melanchthon differed from Calvin also in emphasizing the relation of the Lord's Supper to justification. Marian views Melanchthon viewed any veneration of saints rather critically but developed positive commentaries about Mary. In his annotations in Evangelia commenting on LK 2, 52, he discusses the faith of Mary. She kept all things in her heart, which to Mellington is a call to the church to follow her example. During the marriage at Cana, Mellington points out that Mary went too far, asking for more wine, misusing her position. But she was not upset when Jesus gently scolded her. Mary was negligent when she lost her son in the temple, but she did not sin. Mary was conceived with original sin like every other human being, but she was spared the consequences of it. Consequently, Mellington opposed the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, which in his days, although not dogma, was celebrated in several cities and had been approved at the Council of Basel in 1439. He declared that the Immaculate Conception was an invention of monks. Mary is a representation of the Church and in the Magnificat, Mary spoke for the whole Church. Standing under the cross, Mary suffered like no other human being. Consequently, Christians have to unite with her under the cross in order to become Christ-like. Views on natural philosophy In lecturing on the Librorum de Judiciaris Astrologicis of Ptolemy in 1535-6, Melanchthon expressed to students his interest in Greek mathematics, astronomy and astrology. He considered that a purposeful god had reasons to exhibit comets and eclipses. He was the first to print a paraphrased edition of Ptolemy's Tetrabiblos in Basel, 1554. Natural philosophy, in his view, was directly linked to providence, a point of view that was influential in curriculum change after the Protestant Reformation in Germany. In the period 1536-9 he was involved in three academic innovations the refoundation of Wittenberg along Protestant lines, the reorganization at Tübingen, and the foundation of the University of Leipzig. Death. But before these and other theological dissensions were ended, he died. A few days before his death he committed to writing his reasons for not fearing it. On the left were the words, Thou shalt be delivered from sins, and be freed from the acrimony and fury of theologians. On the right, Thou shalt go to the light, see God, look upon his Son, learn those wonderful mysteries which thou hast not been able to understand in this life. The immediate cause of death was a severe cold which he had contracted on a journey to Leipzig in March. 1560, followed by a fever that consumed his strength, weakened by many sufferings. On the 19th of April 1560 he was pronounced dead. The only care that occupied him until his last moment was the desolate condition of the church. He strengthened himself in almost uninterrupted prayer, and in listening to passages of scripture. Especially significant did the word seem to him, his own received him not, but as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. When Caspar Pusa, his son-in-law, asked him if he wanted anything, he replied, Nothing but heaven. His body was buried beside Luther's in the Schlosskirche in Wittenberg. He is commemorated in the calendar of saints of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod on February 16 and of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, on June 25th.